Hi everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on a variety of other platforms when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm so excited you decided to join me tonight for another Musical Mondays video. It's been a couple weeks off and it's nice to be back and to be sharing with all of y'all today. Um, the plan for today is to um, go through all of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week and then share specifically some of the procedures and things that I talk about with my second grade classes um, and go a little bit more in depth if we have time. Um, but a couple quick things uh, let's chat about first. Um, so first, if you hear me talk about a book or a puppet or uh, something that you really like or you're interested in, um, there's a whole page on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, that's dedicated to like the links and the things um, that you hear about in these videos. So if you go to makemomentsmatter.org and click on the, the um, videos tab, there's a drop down. You can click the 2021, 2022 um, re Musical Mondays recap page or at the bottom of whatever you're watching, uh, the caption, the video, the YouTube, the podcast, whatever you are, <laughs> however you're accessing this content, um, there should be a direct link or Instagram. There's a link in my LinkedIn profile. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of talking about stuff. Uh, but I, I know that like someone's like, Hey, that's a really cool thing. Where can I find that? So, um, it, it should be on the links page. If it's not, send me an email and I'll put it on the links page. Um, if you want, after this video is over, if you want to continue the conversation, there's a Facebook group um, called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. You can join us, and um, it's a, a large group of people who are um, who are just, you know, commenting back and forth, sharing ideas, sharing uh, commentary to help each one of us be better. And so I hope that if you're interested, you'll come and join us um, on that Facebook group um, and get some ideas there. Okay. So because it's been like three or four weeks, um, I hope that I've set up everything right. I'm not sure it's been like, I've had a little time off, so it, I feel a little rusty, even though I've, I did 15 of these videos in the fall. But um, Facebook, if you can hear me, <laughs> you could just put like a, a comment like, I hear you, <laughs> because um, it just, the it, and the Facebook always changes stuff, so it just like looks a little bit different. Anyway, <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump into lesson plans in a second, but first I have um, a really exciting new thing to share with you, and then I want to talk about a book and a freebie that I really like. So, um, okay, thanks Facebook. I'm glad you can I'm glad you can hear me. Okay, so um, super exciting news. When I had these weeks off from like the sort of beginning of December until now, um, I spent a lot of time um, and I worked on um, this exciting new project. Um, I'm releasing a course on Teachable. Um, call, I'm calling it Ukulele 101. Um, if you've ever been to one of my ukulele workshops or if you've uh, ever seen me talk about ukulele, um, I've talked about it a lot of different times at different places, but I, there's never been a place where like it's all in one spot. Uh, and so that's what I did. Um, I recorded 40 videos and they're short. They're, <laughs> they're really short, but it's like four and a half hours of content. So it'd be like a really super in-depth workshop. Um, I go through everything from like what you might want for your classroom, what kind of ukulele would you want for yourself, what kind of thing would you want for a class set of ukuleles, um, how do you get started, what are procedures, how can you store them, what kind of dots do you put on, how do you do that. Um, and then my teaching process, strumming technique and holding technique and how do you play and what chords do you teach and in what order and what are the supplemental songs? Like it's all there in one place. Um, and it's, if you uh, decide to take part in the course, it's a one-time purchase and then you have it forever. So um, I know a lot of people have asked over the years, like, hey, do you have those videos anywhere? And have you ever like recorded any of that? Um, well, now I have, and it's all in one spot. And if you go and in, in the next two days, so by the end, like midnight on Wednesday or something, it changes. But um, there's a promo code. If you put MM2022 for Musical Mondays 2022, you get $5 off the course. And like I said, if you decide to purchase it, you have it once and you have it forever. Um, but there, there have been a lot of folks who've been like, hey, ukulele, you, t you talk about it every once in a while. Have you ever thought about doing it all in one spot? Well, here it is. <laughs> so if you're interested, um, it's all there. And you can access that by uh, the link on my links page or if you just go to courses.makemomentsmatter.org, you can find out more about that. 
Um, or send me an email if you can't find it or whatever. But it's also on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. It's like right at the top. You should be able to find it, courses.makemomentsmatter.org. Okay, that was my exciting thing I had to share because it's been a long time coming and I've been working on a long time. So just wanted to share and give you all a promo code if you're interested by like Wednesday at midnight. If you sign up, you get $5, five off. MM2022. Okay, let's talk about a cool freebie I I've been using that I really love and then a book that I'm excited about and then we'll jump into lesson plans. So I like um, planning out, planning in advance, especially because like concerts are coming up and things like that are happening. So I like to have like a plan of like, when do I need to start teaching something or when does that concert cycle need to start or when do, when do I need to prep, whatever. Um, and so I, I like having like a printed out calendar. I know that's old school of me, but I like having a printed out version that I can go and like actually annotate. Um, I could do it all on my phone, but I like, I, I don't know, for this, and it also then means like all my school stuff is separate from like my life stuff. So <laughs> it's nice to have a printed out version of that. But I like to have like a, I, I don't, I don't have a planner, like a school planner or anything, but I found these really amazing calendars. They're free um, and they're just like beautiful. Um, there are all different versions. I've been using these calendars for like four or five years and there are different versions. There are some that are like more florally and some are more like, fun music song quotes and some or whatever this one is like places in the usa so um this is the uh june and it's wrigley field um here is july uh governor's place williamsburg cool okay sort of fun artistic headers here um august is yellowstone national park i don't know if you can really see that it's just like a really sort of cool sort of minimalist but the art is really fun um, let's see. September is Disneyland, Anaheim. Okay, so anyway, it's just these really fun calendars. Um, and like I said, they're free. I print them out on cardstock and then I put in like all of the stuff. So like each one of these is my teaching cycle. Like when, when is week one, week two, whatever. I have the days on here. Um, I have like, do I have a PT conference? Do I have a whatever? Um, it's all in here. And so I really love these. You can get them at imom.com. I think.com. I don't, I don't know if that's the actual, if it's .org, I don't know. Um, but I have it, all, it's all on, it's on the links page and I have like all my school life. I actually brought these home. I should have left them at school because I, I was nervous I was going to lose them. But like all my school stuff is on here. Um, it's a really fun way. I mean, it's just a, a way to organize, but the, like the, the, um, the print on the top is really fun. The art is really fun. So go check it out. If you're not, if you're like, I don't want places around the United States, there are other options for like other kinds of calendar art I don't know but they're all there and they're all free and they're super cool so go check them out it's at imom.com and if you look like if you look up like imom calendars or just go to my links page it's on the links page so anyway uh that's there um one more thing I want to share before I jump into my lesson plans um I think I shared about this book before um but it's like the perfect time of year to pull it back out um there's this book I found it's called the Tompton um by Astrid Lindgren I think I shared about it last year um, so this book is about, uh, well, I'll just read a couple pages to y'all. Um, so it's actually like a famous, uh, poem and a folk tale. I think, I think it's Finnish or Swedish. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it's Norwegian, but I'll, I'll just read a couple pages to you. So here's, um, the art and it says, it is the dead of night. The old farm lies fast asleep and everyone inside the house is sleeping too. The farm is deep in the middle of the forest. Once upon a time, someone came here, cut down trees, built a homestead and farmed the land. No one knows who. The stars are shining in the sky tonight. The snow lies white all around. The frost is cruel. On such a night, people creep into their small houses, wrap themselves up and bank the heart, the fire on the hearth. Here is a lonely old farm where everyone is sleeping, all but one. The Tomton is awake. He lives in a corner of the hayloft and comes out at night when human beings are asleep. 
He's an old, old Tompton who has seen the snows of many hundreds of winters. No one knows when he came to the farm. No one has ever seen him, but they know he is there. Sometimes when they wake up, they see the prints of his feet in the snow, but no one has seen the Tompton. On small, silent feet, the Tompton moves about in the moonlight. He peeps into a cow shed and stable, storehouse and tool shed. He goes between the buildings, making tracks in the snow. The Tompton goes first to the cow shed. The cows are dreaming that summer is here, and they are grazing in the fields. The Tompton talks to them in Tompton language, a silent little language the cows can understand. And then it says, winters come and winters go, summers come and summers go, soon you can graze in the fields. Obviously, I will want to sing that. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not exactly sure how exactly I'd want to do that. The moon is shining into the stable. There stands Dobbin, thinking, perhaps he remembers a clover field where he trotted around last summer. The Tomton talks to him in Tomton language, a silent little language a horse can understand. Winters come and winters go, summers come and summers go, soon you will be in your clover field. So it's a sort of a fun little book. Now, um, there are, um, hold on really quick. Sorry, there's just a, a fun little troll on Instagram. Fun how that happens on live videos, I had to uh, block them. Anyway, this is sort of a fun tradition. And the cool thing about it is that there's like so many different cultures that have like a, a, a story or history about like a little gnome or a little person or something that comes around and um, and like wanders around or does things. I know, it, I, the reason I know, that, or I think this is not Norwegian, um, is that I, I'm pretty sure that like the Nor Norwegians have like Nissen or something like that. Um, anyway, it's, uh, this is its own little thing and it's a sort of cool and it, it does look like all those little gnomes. There's like cute little clip art you can find over the little gnomes or whatever. Um, so it's fun. You could like pull that and use that. Um, there are all those little statues and things sort of all around, um, that you could find and use that are like the little gnomes, the little whatever. Um, but it's sort of cool. And, and it, it, the little Tomton goes around and talks to like the cows and the horse and the sheep and the dogs it goes all around the farm. Um, I, I've thought about you could you could totally use this with a younger grade and do like an interval if you're doing a somi interview or you're doing a somi interval or you're doing something else or if you wanted to have a certain um, song that you bring in it, there is this repetitive thing where the the Tomton sings back and forth but I also was thinking about how could I do this with non-pitch percussion or how could I do this with pitch percussion even and talk about like playing really quietly or playing you know, like the pitter patter of the feet or how, you know, how could we explore and play on the instruments? It'd be really fun. Maybe if everyone had like a hand drum to make like a little pitter patter of feet as it goes around and then have them sing back and forth. Um, there are just so many cool things you could do with this. Um, and like I said, so many different cultures have a tradition like this of a little sort of a person who, uh, not like a leprechaun or a mischievous little creature. Some do have that. The Nissen, I think the Norwegian Nissen are, are mischievous like that. Um, but so many uh, different cultures have this idea of this little creature that comes and like guards the farm or lives on the farm. So this would be a fun thing to add in. And it's like perfect because it's like in the snow and it's cold and it's whatever. So it's a, a fun little book. And this is The Tomten by Astrid Lindgren. Um, super cute little book. Okay. Well, let's jump into lesson plans for the week. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to talk about K through five pretty quick, and then I'm going to come back to second grade and sort of do a little bit more in depth. So um, I'm going to just sort of zoom through as I go here. Um, and so if there's a song or if there's a poem or something that you're like, I don't know that one, it might be on the links page, or you can leave a comment and I'll try and um, see it in the moment. Sometimes I see it, sometimes I don't. So uh, if I don't see it, uh, let me know and I will... Um, or just, you know, leave the comment. So, sometimes people, <laughs> sometimes people respond in the moment uh, for me if I don't see it. So if you see it, or if I see it, cool. But if not, um, I'll definitely come back and try and answer that. So kindergarten, when they come back, we come and do Come and Make a Circle, the song we've sung all year long, well, almost all year long, it feels like forever and ever. Um, it's just come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. 
Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. The tune is Button You Must Wander, if you know that famous song. Um, I learned this from my friend Andrew Ellingson, but I don't know if he did it or came up with it or, or heard it from someone. And I probably changed the words because I probably forgot it and just sort of did a different version but um it's just our come in and welcome song um and then i do a song um that again i don't know if i picked up from a friend or i read in a book um but it's willem had seven sons um and i'm pr i'm pretty sure i'm saying it right when it goes willem he had seven sons seven sons seven sons Will willem he had seven sons this is what they did and each one of the sons has a verse of something that they did um, so the first one, I, I do the same thing every time, but I think when I originally learned it, it was like, you can have them do whatever you want them to do. But I've just always done the same thing because I will forget what they do. Or if I like do like outrageous things with different classes, like, oh, one was baking bread and the other was, you know, I don't know, pouring the foundation for a house. And the other one was riding a roller coaster. Like, I'm never going to remember that. So <laughs> I just, I have a set seven things that I have each one do every time. But like you could do, I think you do whatever you want. But um, the version I do goes, number one was chopping wood, chopping wood, chopping wood. Number one was chopping wood. This is what they did. And then I added a thing where I have the kids sing back and I'll go, number one. And they'll go, chopping wood. And so it's just like a way for them to like respond back like a, um, it's really honestly, it's a question answer on the so do uh, or me la because it's in this sort of a minor. So um, number one was chopping wood, chopping wood, da, 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 this is what they did. Number one, chopping wood. And then on the next verse, I would do number two is. Oh, what I, what I have number two do? Swimming home. Number two was swimming home, swimming home, swimming home. Number two was swimming home. This is what they did. Number one, chopping wood. Number two, swimming home. So every time after a verse, I have them sing back, starting with number one, and we build up. So it's cumulative as we go, number one through seven. Um, so uh, that's what we do. And this is just like a, a sort of a simple, fun, easy like way for me to like sing at them honestly because it's the first time back from break and like they're back in their like sort of tentative ish you know like it's just their first time back so i'm easing them back easing them in it's sort of like i'm telling a story and singing and then they have the singing element where they get to sing back if they learn the song and they start singing right away great awesome um then my friend tabby shows up for the very first time and they get very excited um tabby is a very great friend of mine tabby is a very great friend of mine and Tabby does this thing every time. And Tabby does this thing every time where Tabby um, copies me. Where Tabby copies me. And the kids think it's hilarious. And the kids think it's hilarious. And see, and when I'm wearing a mask at school, um, I feel like puppets are like a hundred times more successful. Not that they're not successful in general, but <laughs> especially when I have the mask on, like then the kids can't necessarily see that I'm talking. <laughs> like makes them even more successful. Anyway, so um, Tabby comes along and eventually I get Tabby to stop copying me. The kids think it's all hilarious. Um, and then Tabby teaches us the poem Copycat. Do you want to teach us the poem? Of course. It goes, copycat, copycat, one, two, three. Do what I do after me. Anything I do, you do the same. That's how you play the copycat game. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, she teaches the copycat game and then I, or I actually teach that poem. I teach it and she copies because that's the, the way she's allowed to copy. And then I teach it and then the kids copy with Tabby. They do it with me and we do it together and it's really a wonderful time and I get to copy. This is one of my lab. Yeah, it's one of your lab. So anyway, so they, they copy back and forth and then that leads us to a little bit of echo. So like um, I'll clap and they'll clap. We'll do several versions of that. Obviously very easy because it's kindergarten. We'll do padding back and forth. Um, and then usually Tabby will do some sort of movement or something where they'll copy her. Like what will you do? <sighs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they get to copy and do whatever she does. So there's always like some clapping, some padding, and some movement in there. And this is the very first time Tabby does this. Tabby comes back and becomes a class favorite. Okay, let's see. Um, so that so then we do. Um, I have them move around, turn around, we do some other stuff, and I teach them Wee Willy Winky. I teach it as a story, not just as the poem, um, because I want them to like 
know what some of these words in, are in context. So instead of just like saying the poem first, I teach them this, it takes us several minutes, a story about this boy named Willie and he lived far away and he really wanted to play, but his mom wouldn't let him because he had to go to bed because it was eight o'clock. And so it was like um, this sort of uh, back and forth story with him and his mom. She have to go to bed. It's too late and he wants to leave. Anyway, he sneaks out. He goes around town. He runs over to his friend's house after bedtime, tries to get him to come out. None of them come out because it's bedtime. He gets home. He gets caught. And then this poem is created as like a cautionary tale <laughs> to all other kid children of the village. Uh, and then we learn Wee Willie Winky runs through the town, upstairs, downstairs, in his nightgown. And so, like, it, it teaches them the, the whole poem, but it's like, it gives them the context so that they understand, like, what is a nightgown? We talk about that as I'm telling the story. Um, we talk about what we means, because it means small. We talk about um, rapping at the window, crying at the lock. We I act that out. And so, I'm like, wait, not crying, but. <laughs> But like crying, what do you think crying means? So it helps to sort of explain some of the vocabulary. Instead of just doing the poem, it really gives a little bit more context. That's all basically for day one. My class is only 30 minutes, so there's not a lot of time to pack things in. And and when the, those, those, I mean, really all three of those songs have these sort of stories to them. So it takes a little bit of time. The second time they come back, um, we do Willem. We had seven, Willem had seven sons. Again, it's sort of a recap. Um, instead of teaching it, it's just a, a, a run through basically. And this time they usually sing along a bit more. Um, Tabby the copycat comes out again, which again, they're super excited about. Um, and this time Tabby helps with attendance. Like she says names and the kids echo back. So they get a copy her, which they love. And then we do Wee Willy Winky again, and we talk about opposites in the story. Um, so it goes up and down, and they're sleeping and running, or quiet and running. They're quiet and loud, or high and low. I mean, there are, there are different parts of the story that we try and identify, and then we act out the story a little bit, usually as a finger play first, so like running and doing things with their fingers up and down, and then maybe a little bit more action, a little bit more pantomime, so that the kids get a little bit more um, of that action. And again, internalize the story because eventually we're going to move this to barred percussions like xylophones, glockenspiels, metallophones. So I want them to really, really know the story and also know the contrasting elements so that then when we relive that on an instrument, it's not like we're experiencing this, experiencing this idea of up and down for the first time. It's not. It's, it's we're just taking what we already know and applying it on the instruments. So... First day I teach it, it's like to tell a story, explain vocabulary, get it in their heads. The second time is to really internalize and hear and understand all the elements, the high and low and fast and slow and all that. And then the third time when it eventually comes back, it'll be on instruments. And that's that sort of progression. And I like giving it time like that. So I don't do it all in one day because I want them to like experience it, hear it again, enjoy it, internalize it try it again and do something else with it and build on that. And I, I think that some of that just takes like repetition over time. So anyway, that's kindergarten. Okay, first grade. I get to pull out my dulcimer. Um, I don't often use the dulcimer. One, because I don't feel very, like, I don't feel like I am like a, an amazing dulcimer player. Um, second, because it goes out of tune so fast. So it's like every verse I am retuning it. Um, if you have a great idea about how to keep it in tune, awesome. I've tried all my ukulele and guitar tricks on it and it, it's not stained. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is actually called, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the exact, it's from like Backyard Music. It's called like a, I don't know, it's cardboard. So it's like a, like a, a easy dulcimer. I don't remember exactly what they call it. It's on the links page if you're interested in it. It's not that expensive. Um, it actually does have a pretty nice sound um, aside from the need to be retuned part. Anyway. <laughs> So I know enough to get through a couple little songs. And one of the songs that we that I use this for is first grade, we learned the song Hunt the Cattle. So it's, again, is a story. And I say, you know, there's this, this farmer and he had a son. And he said to the son, go let the cattle out. And the, the farmer's kid is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the farmer leaves. And the kid goes and, and he opens up the, the, the gate and lets the cattle out. And then he goes fishing and he takes a nap and falls asleep. And so anyway, the farmer comes back and sings, Wake up, you sleepy head, and go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy head, and go and find the cows. The first grade 
first couple times, the actual original lyrics are wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the cattle. Like hunt down. But I just change it to find because it makes it a little bit easier. I eventually do change the word to hunt the cattle, but I, I, the first couple times I introduce it, I don't do that. So the farmer comes back. He's obviously furious. The cows got out. Um, and then the son goes, oh, pa, it's no big deal. And he goes, the cows are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till they come home. Now I'll go to sleep. And then that's, that's the part that I teach the kids to sing. There's a super fun little... Um, action. So we, we do it through several times where like I sing and they are asleep on the ground and then they wake up and then they respond back with, eh, it's not a big deal. It's so nice out. The cows will come home. Don't worry about it. And this sort of like, it links up with Lobo Peep a little bit later on in the year because it's that same idea of like, leave them alone and they'll come home. Um, but this, the song is the, the one person, the leader, and in this case, it's for right now, it's me, going, wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cows. And then the kid's going, the cows are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till they come home and you know like it's not a big deal um what's really fun is there is an action to this where um the cows are lost that first word of the first phrase they put one knee they're standing and they put one knee down at the end of the next phrase they put another knee down at the end of the next phrase they put one elbow down at the end of the last phrase they put the last elbow down and they fall asleep and then they get a they get to sleep until they're woken up again I accompany it on the dulcimer and it goes fine. <laughs> like I said, it's first grade. They're not gonna be like, mm, Mr. Rao, I really wanna critique your dulcimer playing. They like don't care, but it's fun for them to see a new instrument. It's fun for me to try out my dulcimer skills. It gives them something else, to, a different timbre to listen for and hear, and it's a good time. Anyway, that song is eventually gonna be part of our, our concert. Um, we're going to do a zoo concert later in the year. So it will change from a story about a farmer's son to a story about a zookeeper who's lazy. And we'll get to hunt lots of different animals, find different animals who have escaped. That's what eventually will happen. <laughs> eventually. Um, then uh, after we do hunt the cattle and they get to play around with that, which is one of their faves, um, I get to do another, another one of my favorite things, which is hand out my bags of sticks and stars. Years ago, um, I I think I got this idea from Aileen Miracle. In fact, I get so many ideas from her. I'm sure it's probably her idea. Go find Ma Mrs. Miracle's music room .com. She's brilliant. Um, I'm sure I don't do this idea as well as Mrs. Miracle too, so I'm just going to throw that out there. Anyway, um, uh, this bag has a bunch of like die cut um, stars. You could do other shapes, but um, the stars have just sort of worked well for me. Um, so what I have kids do is to take the stars and they put them out um, on the ground in front of them. I usually put, there's a big version I'll put up on my um, whiteboard. Uh, okay. Ta-da! Okay, so I put up on the whiteboard or I project an image up that works pretty well. Um, and then all the this time for this day, all I want them to do um, in the bag, they're gonna have uh, big sticks, just regular popsicle sticks. And then I know this is Mrs. Miracle because Aileen showed me. I didn't know that <laughs> I didn't know that the half size sticks existed until I went to one of her workshops. <laughs> And this is like, it, you know, like you go to a workshop and you're like, okay, all this content is great. I'm going to use it. And then there's that like one stupid thing that you're like, oh my God, a revelation. This is that is the half, half size sticks. So um, anyway, <laughs> so what I have kids do is we identify long sounds and short sounds. Um, and then uh, on the first day, basically like I'll do one star at a time, you know, a long sound or short sound. They have to put it and they put it on here like this this first time for long or for short. Um, and then I'll do, you know, after an example or two, um, I'll say, okay, now I'm gonna do two stars in a row without stopping in between. So you're gonna have to listen really carefully. So I'll do like, mm, mm. And there'll be a little break in between, but but not like long enough that it's like, mm. Okay, you ready for the next one? Mm. You know, it's like, mm, mm, right. And so I'll do, and I'll, I'll make it progressively harder. So by the end of the day, I'll do all four sounds in a row without stopping. And they sort of have to just, using the sticks, show long, short, short, long, or long, short, long, short, or whatever. 
Um, and that's the first day. And I, I like to switch different timbres. I'll use, you know, a kielbasa or a ratchet or an egg shaker or um, a stir xylophone, just all sort of different sounds so that kids get different examples of different kinds of sound. I'll start, sit down at the piano, you know, and play different things. And so it's fun to give them some examples like that and to try different stuff. Okay, so that's the first day. The second day we come back, we rehash, go and hunt the cattle. Um, and then we do sticks and stars again. This time we add, um, you can make a Z for zero, which will eventually become a rest, if you hear no sound. And sometimes on a star, I'll go mm, mm, like two short sounds on one star instead of a long sound. Eventually this is gonna become quarter notes, eighth note pair, and a rest. Right, but right now it's just icons. It's just identifying sounds and using the manipulatives, just the sticks, to like write down the sounds that you hear. Eventually, it's going kind to of become notation. But I'm just training them, um, you know, training their ears, training them to listen for you know longer sounds, um, two shorter sounds at a time, um, you know, and and trying to like hear that as we go. These bags of stars I've had for seven years and I've used them every year so you know it was a super huge pain to get all of this stuff and to bag it up and like you know have it but like I've used it forever and it's totally great totally worth it I can see on Facebook someone's already put where do you get the mini craft sticks anywhere Amazon Michaels I mean you can you can get them anywhere I think you can get them on walmart.com i mean shop around find a good price go to your local craft store they probably have it and support local it'd be wonderful or you know whatever find it online i'm sure it's available but in between these first two lessons we're doing the song and having the back and forth of the song and then we're also identifying sounds and dictation second grade i'm going to skip because i'm going to come back to in just a second um third grade i do well i'm getting ready one of my co concerts um things have changed <laughs> now concerts are not going to be remote they're going to be with parents and they're going to be outside so woohoo never done one of those before um so one of my <laughs> concerts third grade um is typically in the past has been like international festival like celebrating cultures and songs and culture and music from around the world um so one of the things we're going to do is a lot of folk dance and we're going to do folk dance where we show a couple folk dances to parents and then we invite parents to join us and it's all going to be outside and the kid gets to teach their parents the dance moves so it's like you're with your parent and you get to bring them in it's uh, hopefully it'll be very fun i've done a folk dance night in the past um and it worked in the past i don't know what it's going to look like this year can't wait to try it out <laughs> um anyway so there's this really great book um Teaching Movement and Dance. This is an old version of it. Um, it's by Phyllis Weikert, and that last name is W-E-I-K-A-R-T. Phyllis Weikert is a brilliant, was, a, sorry, she just passed away that, not that long ago, I believe. Um, I think it was just like two or three years. Uh, a brilliant, brilliant teacher of folk dance. And sh this book is fabulous. I don't, it's on the West Music website. Um, I didn't see it on Amazon. I didn't look other places, but I know you can get it. You can probably also find it on teacher buy, sell, trade, Facebook groups, things like that. Um, anyway, so one of the dances I'm going to do in here is like super, super basic. If you have this book, it's page 164. Um, it's called the uh, Banyelu Lambaol. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It says it's from France, but that's not how I, like my French diction coach from college, you know, like French diction class, I feel like would say it. Uh, but that's like what they have written out. I don't know. Anyway, it's a super fun little dance and it's so easy because there are just two parts. The first part is left, you're in a circle, uh, you step to the left, together, left, together, left, together, left, together. That's part one. Part two is your right foot goes tap, tap, back, left together tap tap back left together right so you can you can do I, i've seen a couple of versions of this tap tap back or when you do the tap with your right foot you can make a triangle shape i tell the kids it's a dorito shape tap 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 so triangle left together triangle 
laugh together. Or if you do my version, it goes, uh, cool ranch Dorito <laughs> together. Nacho cheese Dorito left together. Which I know does not work rhythmically, but whatever. It just, it help, like, I think the idea of the Dorito helps with the visual. Anyway, and then that repeats like six times. So it's just the four steps to the left and then right foot, step to the left, right foot, step to the left. It's super simple. Um, the way that you connect is you take your pinkies and you link your pinky with the kid on either side. I say linky your pinky and then you just move in a circle. But I feel like it'd be one that'd be really easy to teach parents um, if we wanted and it's super fun and, and the kids think it's a hoot now. So woohoo, trying it out. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. So that's what we start. Um, and then my kids get to do the whole rest for the first time, which I'm really excited. So um, the third graders, uh, let's see, I let me pull it up here. Um, so if you want, I'll show just sort of, I know I show this a bunch, but just in case. Um, so this is the, the Note Neighborhood. Um, I wonder if you can see this Instagram, hold on. I'm not good at showing Instagram. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me see if I can show you this. Um, there we go Instagram hope you can see this okay so <laughs> um, Toss says watch your step everybody we're in a construction zone basically the whole idea behind this is you know they get to they've already met the King Whole Note um, they've seen King Whole Note and what happens to King Whole Note well he, they're going through a construction zone he's not watching where he's going and he falls in a huge hole. <laughs> and so the whole surprise ends up looking like a whole rest. Ooh. <laughs> and um, and so he falls in a hole and they have to find a way to get him out. And Tal's like, oh my gosh, this looks like something I've seen before called a whole rest. Um, I just, you can, you can see, I mean, if you don't, if you use Note Neighborhood and you don't like see me in it, like this is a perfect PowerPoint for where I, where I live in this, in this resource. For example, Ta says, um, hey, that hole reminds me of something I saw the other day. It's called a hole rest. Doesn't it look a lot like the hole that King Hole Nut fell into? And then King Hole Nut from In the Hole yells out, yes, very interesting. Now please get me out of here. Like the sassiness in this PowerPoint, um, I'm not going to say it matches my sassiness, but it's it's pretty sassy. Anyway, they walk away. They find the hole. They're trying to find a way. He explains, you know, how you read it, how you count it. And then he goes, oh, my gosh, there's a note for almost or there's a rest for almost every note. The friend neighbor that we know and each one gets the same amount of beat that the note does. So this is a point where I always talk to kids um, whenever we're doing notes and rests. Um, I say a, notes are beats of sound. Rest are beats of silence. Cause I do, I kids get confused sometimes and say like, you know, I'll say like, how many beats does a quarter rest get? Zero. Well, no, it gets a beat. It's just a beat of silence. So it, um, using using that terminology like notes are beats of sound, rests are beats of silence. I'm trying to get them to you know understand that like yes, it gets a beat. It's just a beat of silence. And so that there is a placeholder. It does get um, it does get a it does get a moment in there. It gets a beat. So anyway, how do they get King Hole Nut out? And then Ta goes, oh my gosh, I found these two notes. They look pretty similar. The half rest and the whole rest look a lot alike. How are we going to remember that they're different? Well, when they go back to the... Oh yeah, and then King Hole Nut from off screen. Ta, where did you go? Are you ever going to help me out of this hole? So anyway, so they go back, trying to help him out. The sassy half note shows up. They take her hat, her half rest, um, and King Holnut tries to step on it and get out of the hole, but obviously that doesn't work. It only gets him half the way out. And then we have to um, figure out why. And there's a little bit of like, you know, two and four and figuring out, you know, you have to have two of the half rest to equal the whole rest. So it goes into the basically so some of the theory, but it all just ke keeps it as a part of this story, incorporates all of that so that um, kids... And the reason I do that is like, number one, I, I think that giving them a story helps the kids understand a little bit better. Um, so, you know, like it, it's easy to remember them by their stories that one is a hat and one is like a hole in the ground. It also helps them understand how many beats each one gets. If you associate it with like the character it comes with. So, I mean, the reason I do the Note Neighborhood at all is because I want kids to have, I, I think that stories are so important and really help kids remember things better and so um, I made this set of stories to do that but also it just sort of helps explain away some of the concepts um, and help them understand things that are maybe a little bit tricky. So in this first day we learn the whole rest um, and then we 
you know, we zoom on from there. And we do it with the Note Neighborhood. There is a practice PowerPoint for the whole rest, um, and we can come back to that, but just not on this day. It's in a, a, a day down the road. Second lesson of the week, we, we review the folk dance that we learned, the one that I still don't know if I'm pronouncing right. And in Facebook, if you know how to pronounce it, or Instagram, if you know how to pronounce it, please let me know. <laughs> I don't think it's Bonnie Lou. Bon, Bonnie Lou. It says... Banyelu Lambaol. But I don't, I don't know. Please, please help me know. Anyway, and then my kids learned the song in Austrian and went yodeling. Um, I'll get into that another day and talk through that process if, if you're interested. Fourth grade, uh, they come in and each day we're starting our class with a nursery rhyme. I'm saying it's the nursery rhyme of the day. In about six or seven weeks, we're going to do a, an activity that sort of incorporates a bunch of nursery rhymes and kids have to know them before we can do that activity. So like every class, we're just like first part of the day, taking three minutes to just do it, learn it, um, explain if there are words or things they don't know, I'll talk about that. If not, we'll just zoom on. So the first day we do Humpty Dumpty. Um, we talk about it. We explain some of the words in there. Like it doesn't, it doesn't need a lot of explanation, but like Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. It doesn't mean it was an amazing fall. He was so happy to have had that. It's great in this instance means big, you know, and how to, what in the story tells us that this poem is old? Well, all the king's horses and all the king's men, number one, we don't have a lot of kings anymore. And number two, if we were going to go visit the king, we probably would not ride a horse, right? So it's like we just talk about some of that as we go with each of the little nursery rhymes that we do. So this day we do um, Humpty Dumpty Sat on a Wall, <clears throat> and then we learn the song uh, The Green Grass Grew All Around. It's a cumulative song. Um, you could do Green Grass Grew All Around, or you could do Rattlin Bog. They're basically the same song. Um, they actually might have the same origins, um, but I, I just chose to do Green Grass Grew this year. Um, and then that takes up most of the rest of our day because that song takes a little while to, to filter through. The second lesson of the week we do Hey Diddle Diddle, The Cat and the Fiddle. And then I jump into um, this. Okay, I know it says highlighting the holidays. I, I looked at this book uh, in December and I was like looking for songs that like I could maybe do. This is by Jeff Kriske and Randy DeLellis, the, the guys behind the Game Plan curriculum series. So this is like super, super ORF inspired. Um, <clears throat> there, there are some things in here that are like Halloween songs and some are like Thanksgiving songs and there's a Hanukkah song and there's, there's all different stuff in here. Valentine's Day, Chinese New Year. Um, I mean, there's spring, there's May, there's whatever. Um, but the song that I like is called Laughing All the Way, and it really, I don't know, it, I guess it's just supposed to be festive and christmas E, but there's, like, no, I don't feel like there's any, like, melodic allusion to, like, any specific song. It's just like, hey, here's this cool song, and it would fit at Christmas. I don't know. But, so anyway, so I'm teaching it now in January, and I feel like it's just a fun, sort of easy, festive song. But it's one that we're processing through, and kids are learning all parts, and then they're going to um, take different parts of the song and um, sort of take ownership of them. We'll, we'll um, give them out to different parts and make an arrangement out of it. And my fifth graders are learning um, a poem based on... Um, just body percussion from this book, the volume one, um, music for children. Um, if you have done an ORF level, you probably already have this book. If you haven't done an ORF level, you might have this book. And if you haven't done an ORF level, it might make sense, but <laughs> I would say go take an ORF level because, um, it helps you make so much more sense of this book. Anyway, I have a lot of tabs and things in here. Um, a lot and a lot of notes and stuff. Cause I, it's a great resource if you know how to use it. Go take an ORF level and you'll learn how to use it. Anyway, so <clears throat> um, in this, um, on page 62, there's a there's a body percussion piece. I'm doing number two, um, and, it, and I've added words, and it's sort of New Year's resolution themed. And so the words I've added are, I am going to exercise today. I'll run and I'll jump and I'll sweat. And that repeats, I am going to exercise today. I'll run and I'll jump and I'll sweat. <clears throat> Part B goes, I am going to run a mile. I am going to run a mile. Almost ready, almost ready, almost ready, yeah. And then back, I am going to exercise today. I'll run and I'll jump and I'll sweat. So we put that together in AABA form. Um, and then there's a body percussion ostinato 
ostinato that goes underneath it that goes stomp, clap, stomp, 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 which we learn in layers. So it's stomp, snap, stomp, clap, pat, stomp, snap. And it is really a challenge for them to get the words and that going. Um, and it's, it's super fun. And then we clap and we take out the words and we clap that line instead. So it's sort of a thing that builds a little bit over time. But I, I you could do it any time of year. Um, it, but I just like the idea that it's like New Year's resolution-ish. Um, also, I think that you could do this any time of year. But um, you could also just change the words if you don't want that. I mean, those are words that I made up. I just, I just took the rhythm inspiration from here. I don't think I did the rhythm exactly the way it's supposed to be. Um, but it's it's inspired by this on page 62 of volume one but you can take that and you can run with it you could change the words you could do something else but the, i for me it just works well um and it's something that like then we can um take it later and we can move to unpitched percussion we could do uh building brick exercises so in the second day of doing this what we jump into is let me see if i can pull this up Oh no, I can't pull it up right now. That's okay. Um, uh, we we added on the second day. We sort of do question and answer back and forth using um, words inspired by exercises, um, and that's sort of where we run with this lesson. And maybe I'll try and focus on this one next week and and do a little bit more in depth next week on this. Okay, second grade. I know I said I was going to like do in depth, but like we're running out of time. Um, there's a a song I learned from Amy Abbott at a workshop several years ago. And I loved her version and I was so excited and I was like, re like just so excited to teach my kids. It's a fun little song. It's sort of the, um, on the lines of like down by the banks of the, da, 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 you know, like, um, or the, any of those like hand clapping beat go around the circle sort of games. Um, and the version that she taught me is not the version, um, is not the version that I found online today. Uh, someone on Facebook just said, can you tell us the name and title of the folk dance book? The folk dance book is called Teaching Movement and Dance. There are a lot of different editions. I have the fifth edition, but I don't think that's the one that's the most recent. You can find it, it's on the links page. It's by Phyllis Weikert, last name W-E-I-K-A-R-T. It is on the links page, I know, and you can find it on the West Music website, I'm pretty sure. That's for you, Marta. Okay, um, so anyway, Tarzan the Monkey Man is the name of the song. It's apparently a Boy Scout song. I don't know. The version that I learned from Amy goes, Tarzan the Monkey Man swinging from a rubber band. Splish, splash, take a bath, the color is what? Okay, that is not the, ver the, the version the Boy Scouts apparently used to sing is, Tarzan the Monkey Man swinging from a rubber band. I don't know. Um, fell something hurt his head i don't even know how exactly that happens but like breaks open his head and they're like what color is the blood okay that number one why number two what color would his blood be it'd be red like what is he an alien that doesn't even make any sense so the way i teach this story is that like you know tarzan's trying to learn how to swing from the vines and he falls a lot because when he's first learning, like it's he's not successful. So the first time he falls into like a meadow and he gets all grass stained and he takes a bath. And then, of course, the bath water's green. And then the next time he falls into like a strawberry patch and he stands up and he's all covered with strawberry. So he's red. And then the bath water, he takes a bath and the wa water's red. And then he falls into a, I don't know, a blackberry bush or whatever. So, you know, some other thing give it another color. And the kids are like, okay, okay, we get it. We follow you. But the idea of the game is, um, so the idea of the game is uh, that, like, you you pass the beat around the circle. Tarzan, the monkey man, swinging from a rubber band. Splish, splash, take a bath. The color is what? And then whoever gets, uh, lands on the what, uh, they get to uh, choose the color. So if the color is blue, you, there are two ways to eliminate. You could just spell out the color. You could go B-L-U-E, and whoever ends on the last letter is out. Or you could do an extended version like B-L-U-E is blue, and O-U-T is out. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, that, that's a fun version. We do Tarzan. And then what I give the kids, here I'll show you. Um, I always, for kids who I think are a little bit um, 
need a little bit of help or whatever, I found that, okay, I found this image. I'm pretty sure this is just Disney. Hold on, let me see if I can pull this up here. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm pretty sure this is just like a version of like the Disney Tarzan as a kid or whatever. Um, and then I found, or and then I just added this so that like as we're playing the game, because there are always gonna be those kids who like it's gonna land on them and they're gonna go like, I can't remember any color at all in the world. So um, I just on the side of the page just have the different colors of Roy G. Biv and, and spelled out. So then if the kid's like, I can't think of anything. Okay, well choose one from the PowerPoint on the board. Cool, red. So then we'll spell out, you know, and then if a kid decides to choose a color that's not up there, um, I say, great, as long as you can spell it, we can do it. So like one kid was like, aquamarine. I was like, great, spell it. <laughs> he couldn't spell it. So like, oh, sorry, I can't use it. How about teal or whatever? You know, he, you know, he can spell that. So if a kid chooses to go off book and choose like a color that's not one that we know or whatever, as long as you can spell it, we can do it. But if you can't spell it, you know, maroon. I had a kid try to spell it like three times. Couldn't get it. So he couldn't use that as an as an example <clears throat> for the Tarzan song, but that's fine. Anyway, the first day we do this, uh, I teach them the song, um, and then we add in the elimination game sort of slowly. One thing that I make sure that I add in there is that as we're teaching it, uh, first we just pat the steady beat on our own knees, everybody the whole time through as we do the song and then I do a version where I say let's just pass the beat around the circle and so we'll go like pass 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 and I'll actually snap and each kid will try and get the you know the patting the person on their one side on beat and we go all the way around the circle until it gets back to me and then I say great try it again and then I sing the song as they're doing it passing around the circle I find that they're more successful if I like take that one time around of no words, no like no song, anything, no game before they even know there's a game of just passing the beat around the circle to make sure it actually can get all the way around. And then each kid can like gets the idea of like you're passing in rhythm, you know, to the next kid. Um, and so we learn that whole song and then the elimination happens and um, each time a kid is eliminated, they're kicked out of the circle. The way I learned is you actually get kicked into the circle and then you create an inside circle. And as those kids who are, are kicked out of the original circle make a new circle, your circles eventually switch spots. Like because the, the main circle you start eliminating and so it starts getting smaller. And then the kids in the middle who are the eliminated kids, well, as you add more, it starts getting bigger and you have to sort of switch spots. Obviously I can't do that in, during COVID. I can't have us like all grouped all together like that. And then <laughs> that doesn't quite work, but um, it's a, still a super fun game. Use the nicer version of the, of the you know, colorful bath water and not the, did Tarzan fall and break his head open? Why, why would you even do that? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, unimportant. Um, and then after that, we do um, a version of the Note Neighborhood where this, so this is second grade, it comes before third grade. Second grade is, is seeing the half rest for the first time. And when they do that, um, they go to the ice cream shop. And this, okay, again, I just, I gotta show just like one moment of this because again, you're gonna see David's sassiness. Um, <laughs> so they go to the ice cream shop. Um, hold on, let me pull it up here. They go to the ice cream shop. Oh yeah, we're reading. It's so much fun. It's great. It's wonderful. Uh, we're reading along. No big deal. Um, and then out of nowhere, the sassy half note shows up and goes, ice cream! And then like, why are we waiting around? What's happening? Well, they're, they're waiting outside because they go to uh, Kate Mon's ice cream store. Again, if you know <laughs> if you know Orf Schulberg, you know my nerdy joke of adding Kate Mon in there. Um, but anyway, so they're waiting in line because the ice cream is so good that people are waiting in line. And they say, you know, it's a good sign if people are willing to wait. That must mean the ice cream is really good. And anyway, the sassy half note doesn't want to wait. They convince her to wait. Um, and they convince her to get in line. She gets two spots in line. And so we, we read through different patterns. Um, and, and she's doing pretty good. So as you can see, there are some supports along the way. On the first page, there's a little arrow that shows them, you know, the two beats. Um, and then it sort of gradually goes away and they're just get reading on their own. Um, and then she's, you know, she gets tired. She doesn't want to hang around. She wants to leave. So she leaves, but she leaves her hat because she doesn't want to lose her place in line. So she leaves her hat and that eventually becomes the half rest. So as we're doing this, one of the things that I do is I have a little laser pointer on my, um, 
my clicker. And so I will point along and speak the first couple times, and then I will stop speaking and just point, and then I will stop pointing. That's it's um, it's a gradual release. You know, I'm just I'm gradually taking away supports, and I'm letting the kids just do it on their own. So uh, this is something that I do sort of each time. So the very first time we're reading just normal rhythms, I do that. When we're reading with a sassy half note, if they need it, we'll do that. Um, I make sure that I am speaking and doing the laser pointer for the half rest because kids tend to not give the half rest its full two beats. Um, and so I make sure that I, I give them that example just to sort of reinforce two beats this, this first time through. The other thing I find about this this story that particularly is helpful is that I say like, oh, the sassy half note, she's going to be so sassy and upset if you don't give the hat two full beats. So count it out all the way in your head. You know, like I demo how to do that because she'll be so sassy and upset if you don't give it its full, you know, two beats. So again, I'm embracing the sassiness. I am embracing the, the fussiness in the story and I'm, I'm adding that in as part of that. The second day they come back, we do Tarzan again, more elimination, and then we, in our, on whiteboards, we play a little bit with time signatures. I don't call them that. I don't, I don't really go into that. I just say, okay, now if the magic number is four, that means you can put four uh, quarter notes in, four taws, and let's, you know, like add it in. We do that. We add a bar line, and then I say, ooh, the magic number changed. Now it's three. What are you going to do? You have to change from four to only three can fit. Now how are we going to change that? So it's a little bit of like changing and morphing and fixing, and what I found as I started doing this is I spend less time talking about like the time signature, like you find it at the beginning of music. I don't do that. It's more like here, the, the, the magic number controls the measures and they think of it as a game because as the number changes, then they have to change and adapt. And I make it more compositional. So it's like I give them a blank measure and I say, here's the magic number. You can put whatever you want in or how can we substitute to make this work? So it's more of like a puzzle and a mind game than like, here is this structure. I used to teach it like, here's this like structural thing and it didn't make so much sense. And so now I do it as more of like a game, more of like a, an interactive thing as we're doing time signatures. And eventually, um, I show them the four over four. And at first it's just a magic number. And I do like that, that thing where you do like the four over and then a quarter note. Um, and eventually I'm going to change it to four over four, right? Or three over four or two or four or whatever. But this first time it's just playing around and changing and moving around that sort of makes that all happen. Okay, next week I'm going to try and spend more time on my in-depth. I, I found that in the last year or so that like I give... I give like more along the way, like I give more, I talk longer about each lesson so you get more of the framework and then I have like less of like a focus on a grade. I hope that's okay. But it means that you get all of my six grade levels of lessons and you get a, a pretty good chunk of how I teach that along the way. So I don't know if that's helpful or not. I hope that maybe it is. Um, before I go, I just want to say one last time, I'm so excited about um, the ukulele course that I have now, um, if you can find it, it's on part, it's on Teachable, but you can find it at courses.makemomentsmatter.org. It's every ukulele workshop I've basically ever done. Uh, it's like four and a half hours. It's like 40 different videos. Um, and if you're interested uh, between for the next 48 hours, so between like now and midnight on Wednesday, um, if you put in the, the coupon code, gift code, whatever, MM, 2022 so musical mondays 2022 you can get $5 off and once you take that course if you get in that course you have it for forever so if like in 2 years when you're teaching ukulele you're like oh my gosh i forget you can go back and re <laughs> rewatch um and you can get a pd certificate blah 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 all the fun stuff if you have questions send me an email but um i thought i'd throw that out there and remind folks to like here's this new course i'm so excited about it go check it out Anyway, I will see you all next week for another Musical Mondays video. I know that it's um, a, week, a day off for a lot of people, but I'm going to still be here doing Musical Mondays next Monday night. I hope I'll see all of you then. Thanks so much, everybody who came along. It's been great seeing you and great to be back. Bye, everyone.